When commissioners of the CWME came together in the Cook Islands, it was to reflect on how the new mission statement could be turned into a living statement that churches could use to guide their mission activities. In an ever-changing world, a statement like this is very important. Every organisation needs a mission statement um, to direct its future, um, to help it to um, define where it's come from, where it's going. Well, we thought we needed a, a new mission statement precisely because the old one was uh, getting somewhat outdated. I'm so happy to see that the new mission statement is provoking a fresh interest in mission today. So I think that when we have a mission statement, then we actually go back to the authentic rule, uh, roots of what ecumenical movement is or should be about. The Cook Islands, and in particular the island of Atutaki, represents a unique glimpse into the history of mission. This is where the first Christians arrived in the South Pacific. John Williams of the London Missionary Society came here in 1821 with Papia and Vahapata. They were two newly converted missionaries from Tahiti and it was their task to bring Christianity to the Cook Islands. Papia made remarkable progress and John Williams used him to take up the greater challenges on Rorotonga, the largest island in the Cook Island group. partnership in mission was now part of history and almost a hundred years later found its modern expression in 1910 in Edinburgh. The first mission conference had lofty ideals. The call to action was to evangelize the world in one generation. This call is today considered to be the symbolic start of the ecumenical movement. It was in Edinburgh that the decision was made to establish an organization, the International Mission Council, which would work for cooperation between Protestant mission councils. The First World War had a huge impact on the Second World Mission Conference held in Jerusalem in 1928. The war saw Christian fighting Christian and this challenged the ideal that Western civilization was the embodiment of the Gospel. The focus shifted inward. The Kingdom of God became the central theme of the conference. The third mission conference was held in 1938 in Tamba Am, India. Fascist regimes were on the rise in Europe. How was the church to react to this new reality? What would the role of the church be in mission during this era? It was accepted at Tambaram that the essence of the church was mission. The conference also addressed the issue of interfaith dialogue for the first time. The conference in Whitby, Canada in 1947 was much smaller. The world was going through fundamental changes after the shock of the Second World War. Countries and the relations between people had to be rebuilt. The focus would now be partnership and obedience to the Word of God. The conference also decided to foster a good relationship with the newly formed World Council of Churches. The WCC held their first assembly in Amsterdam in 1948. The next conference in Willingen, Germany in 1952 was to prove a watershed for the IMC. Events in China were a direct threat to the mission enterprise there and in the rest of the world. When China uh, was taken over by Mao's revolution, many of the faith missionaries who were in China, as you know, were expelled. Mm. And many of them came to Latin America in, in the 40s, wow. you see? So many of them came to work with many evangelical churches. Mm. Mm. And they came with a conservative type Christianity, but also, I think, with, you know, an, an anti-communist type of uh, Christianity. The delegates rediscovered that mission was first of all an act of God. Missio Dei, or the mission of God, emerged as the key concept. 
it was a revolutionary change in thought. In 1958, the IMC met in Akimoto near Accra, in Ghana. They debated a proposal to unite with the World Council of Churches. A great majority accepted the proposal. The mission councils affiliated with the IMC became affiliated with the CWME and the IMC ceased to exist. Now, part of the WCC, the CWME organized world mission conferences every seven to eight years in between the WCC assemblies. The first meeting of the newly formed CWME was held in 1963 in Mexico City with the theme, Mission in Six Continents. The Bangkok Conference in 1972 became famous for its holistic approach to the theme, Salvation Today. The concept of contextual theology was also put forward at Bangkok. The Melbourne Conference of 1980 was heavily influenced by the liberation theologies of Latin America. With the theme, Your Kingdom Come, the conference insisted that the poor and the churches that served them should be given their rightful place in God's mission. The church had to begin to make a change in how it viewed the world, in how its own work would begin to develop in the kinds of projects that suddenly presented themselves. Much of Melbourne's insights are found in the document Mission and Evangelism, an ecumenical affirmation, which was adopted by the WCC Central Committee in 1982. It remains a fundamental text on mission. The conference in San Antonio, Texas in 1989 became famous for the statement on the relation between Christianity and other religions. The statement said that the church couldn't point to another way to salvation than through Jesus Christ. At the same time, they had to acknowledge that the church could not put a limit on God's saving power. The last WCC World Mission Conference of the century took place in 1996 in Salvador de Bahia in Brazil. It was fully dedicated to the relation between the gospel and culture. Salvador recognized the fundamental equal value of all cultures, but also their ambiguity. The conference in Athens in 2005 was held for the first time in a majority orthodox context. The delegates were reminded of the priority of God's Holy Spirit in mission. I think the Commission of World Mission and Evangelism has got a wider perspective trying to bring um, Christians of all faith traditions to contribute to the success of the commission. So they have a, a role to be played by Pentecostals. And now as a Pentecostal within the commission, I bring out Pe Pentecostals' perspective of issues. The churches were called to be ambassadors of reconciliation and in particular to build, renew and multiply spaces where humans could experience something of God's healing and reconciling grace. We, we stand before a, a challenging opportunity to develop dynamic, multi-directional outreach of the good news for all, to all. To achieve this, a process was initiated after the Porto Alegre conference to come up with a new statement on mission and evangelism. For a week, the commissioners work intensively on the new statement in Ghana in November 2011. The process of uh, formulating the new mission and evangelism statement has been a long, intense and rigorous process. The new statement was presented to the CWME at a pre-assembly mission event in Manila during March 2012. 200 representatives of WCC member churches and affiliated mission bodies worked to finalize the document that would take mission forward. It was presented to the WCC Central Committee meeting in Crete, Greece on the 5th of September 2012. It was unanimously approved as the new official position statement on mission and evangelism. From here, 
the Cook Islands, where partnership in mission was born, commissioners can now reflect on how this new statement on mission and evangelism will guide the work of God's mission into a new era. One of the challenges with the mission statement is it, it is a snapshot. It's a, a statement of intent at a particular time and the world goes on changing around it. Well, I think it's, it's a huge uh, challenge for the Commission and for the World Council of Churches and for all the congregations to accept it as their own. It is a very important step that the study guide is being uh, developed now. It is not the end of the road at all. It's only the beginning of uh, a new stage of the ongoing journey. I would like to invite the all people who are interested in, who are committed to God's mission, to join in to the di new direction and new concept of mission which has been produced by the new mission statement.